The next talk in this session um, is by uh, Hajime Ono, uh, Koichi Otaki, uh, Manamisato, Anaheti Veikune, Pesetivea, Yuko Otsuka, and Masatoshi Koizumi. Uh, the title is Processing Syntactic Ergativity in Tongan Relative Clauses. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming to our talk on Tongan relative clauses. Um, we examine relative clause processing as JET uh, through a self paced reading experiment with adult native speakers of Tonga. We are happy to share the results with you today. Okay, let's begin. Um, in the sentence processing field, various hypotheses have been proposed, as we know already in order to account for native speaker structural preferences and many others. Um, but still we have an unbalanced sample problem. The set of languages that has been used in those studies is quite limited and typologically quite unbalanced. Um, then we would like to investigate to what extent some of these hypotheses proposed in the literature are truly universal or effective. And we expect to see some variations. And if so, we are interested in why. Um, when one observation we would like to pay attention to in this talk is a processing asymmetry between subject relative clauses and object relative clauses. Um, as Jet introduced beautifully, uh, in many languages, the processing cost for subject relative clauses is lower than that for object relative clauses. A typical paradigm is shown in four. Uh, the processing advantage of SRC has been found in various measures such as reading time, eye tracking, and so forth. We note in five that SRC advantage has often been observed in SVO or SOV languages and typically with a nominative accusative case system. But we now already that we know already that in Basque, a language with an ergative absolutive, absolutive case system, it has been claimed to have an ORC preference. We will come back to the proposed explanation later, but we want to know more about the nature of this SRC ORC preference. And Tonga seems to be, seem to provide us an interesting testing ground. Um, as, you may, as you know, uh, Tongan is a language with ergative absolutive case system and being different from Basque, Tongan is a verb initial language. <coughs> Okay, going to the next page, um, we will quickly review some grammatical properties of Tongan. Tongan uses the ergative absolutive case system where the subject of intransitive verb and the object of transitive verb are marked with the same case marker called absolutive case. The subject of transitive verb is marked with a different case marker called ergative case. Um, the examples of ergative clauses are shown in 10, 11 and 12. Example 10 shows that when a third person singular ergative NP is extracted for a relative clause, a resumptive pronoun ne must show up as a clitic before the verb. This illustrates syntactic ergativity with respect to the A bar movement. As shown in 11, such a requirement does not exist for an extraction of an absolutive NP. Example in 12 show inter, illustrate an extraction from absolutive subject NP. This occurs when the verb is intransitive or it is called a middle verb. Um, there is a small note about this critic ne, but maybe we can skip this. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to section three. Uh, in section three, we will briefly review some issues related to the processing of relative clauses and some related observations. First, let's look at some studies on ergative languages. Um, Carreras et al. examined relative clause processing on Basque and found that ORC advantage over SLC. And they suggested that morphological complexity of ergative case is playing an important role in Basque. Uh, next, Polinsky et al. investigate the relative clause processing in a bar. A bar is pre-nominal relative clause, has pre-nominal relative clauses like Japanese. And they found that native speakers of a bar uh, slows down when they see an ergative NP inside the relative clause, which comes before the head now. <clears throat> 
This suggests that in ergative absolutive languages, the ergative marker can be a, a great uh, trigger for structure building because the presence of the ergative marker tells the parser that the verb must be transitive and there is an absolute NP somewhere in the structure. Next, let's look at previous studies on verb initial languages. Uh, Wager's work on Chamorro and Tanaka's study on Tagalog both observed the SRC preference on post-nominal relative clauses. Such an observation suggests that factors related to the accessibility hierarchy plays a role. The accessibility hierarchy says subject is more prominent than object, while there is an originally proposed um, <clears throat> to account for the typological observations, the spirit of which can be utilized to account for the processing asymmetry between a SRC and ORC. Um, Tanaka et al. has a slightly different explanation as well. Based on the corpus study, they found the correlation between the animated head noun and the use of Asian SRC. They then argue that such a distributional bias can um, <clears throat> account for the SLC preference. Finally, uh, let's look at previous studies on ergative and verb initial languages. Tolan et al investigated the comprehension of WH questions in Niwean, which shares lots of characteristics with Tongan. In the vert visual world eye tracking study, they observed the dependency with absolutive object is preferred to that with ergative subject. They suggest that absolutive has a wider distribution than ergative, and that is related to the preference. <clears throat> Um, let me talk about one more observation, which is related to the filler gap dependency formation. It seems fair to assume that one of the processing steps in comprehending relative clauses is to in integrate the filler, which is a head noun, to the gap, an empty slot inside the relative clause. Yano et al. and Yasunaga et al. observed that the processing cost increases when the parser finally determines the gap position and integrates the filler. For example, look at 24. Suppose that NP1 is a dislocated phrase, we call this filler, from the postverbal gap position. In order to comprehend the sentence, the parser needs to integrate the filler to the gap. Examining Turuku Sejik and Kakuchike, Yano and Yasunaga's study observed a P600 effect, um, which is an indicator for processing cost at the NP2, suggesting that upon hearing NP, the NP2, the native speakers of those languages integrated the filler to the gap. Okay, so what, <clears throat> what should we learn from these previous studies? As shown in 25, an ergative marker it can be an NP or a verbal morpheme is informative. The parser can start positing a detailed structure building based on it. In Tongan, the resumptive pronoun can be the trigger for the detailed structure building. Maybe it comes with the cost because the dependency with the ergative subject position seems to be costly. But at the same time, we saw that subject advantage is quite robust which seems to be contradictory with the processing cost for the ergative subject. So <clears throat> we are uh, interested in examining, examining the role of resumptive pronouns in Tongan relative clause processing. It could incur a major processing cost or maybe not. Also, we want to know whether the processing cost related to ergativity does interact with subject advantage if there is any such effect. Finally, we want to check where in the sentence the processing costs show up. Based on those, we can hypothesize the processing mechanism of Tongan relative clause. Okay, let's go to section four. <clears throat> Let me talk about the experiment we did. We recruited participant and, uh, from the university in Tonga, and we prepared 21 sets of target stimuli with three conditions. We will look at uh, the actual materials later. 
we conducted a self-paced reading task which sentence, uh, in which sentences are presented phrase by phrase. Every stimulus sentence was followed by a comprehension question. As shown in 31, uh, we prepared three conditions manipulating the gap positions and case. In ergative subject condition and absolutive object condition, the same transitive verb was used. In absolutive subject condition, in contrast, a middle verb was used where the subject is marked with absolutive. The sample stimuli were presented in 32 in the next page. Um, R1234, that's region 1234, are the region numbers which indicates how a sentence was divided. Region 5, 6, 7 are the critical regions in this experiment. In region 5, the past tense marker appears, which indicates the beginning of the relative clause. In ergative subject condition, the resumptive pronoun ne also appears. R6, uh, region 6 is the relative clause verb region, and region 7, an NP inside the relative clause shows up. Um, there are a few predictions. If, if relative uh, resumptive pronoun is not expected at the beginning, and if the resumptive pronoun triggers a complicated structural decisions, there should be a slowdown in ergative subject condition. Also, we expect to see a filler gap integration effect at the verb or the NP regions. Okay. <clears throat> Let me explain how we analyze uh, the data. Uh, as for the reading time data, we use residual reading time. Uh, there are at least two motivations for that. First, in region five, due to the resumptive pronoun, ergative subject condition was always longer than the other two conditions. We wanted to control for this. Second, in region six, the transitive verb in uh, ergative subject condition and an absolute object condition were slightly longer than the intra intransitive middle verbs in absolute subject condition on average. So we also we want to control for that. Um, residual reading time was calculated by subtracting the predicted reading time from the raw reading time. The predicted reading time was estimated by a linear regression equation for each participant and the number of syllables in that region. Uh, information shown in 37 and 38 is about specific analysis details for those who are interested. Um, 4.4 results, uh, we eliminated data from three participants due to their low performance and 40 shows the mean accuracy rates for the comprehension question for each condition. We did not observe any statistically meaningful difference here. On the right hand side, uh, the graph on the top panel is about the mean row reading time for each region and for each condition. And the graph on the bottom panel is about the mean residual reading time. Recall that the region five, mm -hmm. six, seven are the critical regions. Okay, on the next page, uh, you can see a graph. I hope it's much nicer one uh, that focuses on the critical regions. In region five, uh, ergative subject condition was slower than the other two conditions. This effect was observed in both row reading time and residual reading time. So it is not the read, it's, it's not the length effect due to the presence of resumptive pronoun in ergative subject condition. In region six, <coughs> there was an effect in row reading time, but the effect disappeared in residual reading time. That indicated that the effect in row reading time was due to the longer length of the transitive verb. So it just disappeared. Uh, in region seven, object, uh, absolute object condition was read longer than the ergative subject condition. Note that in 
absolutive object condition, an ergative NP appears in this region. We put a small summary in 44. In region 5, the resumptive pronoun increased the reading time, and in region 7, the ergative NP took longer to read compared to the other types of NPs. Also, absolutive subject condition was read very smoothly in general. Okay, let's move on to the next page. Let's discuss what we have got. Uh, first, in region five, we found that resumptive pronoun took time to read. We suggest that the presence of a uh, resumptive pronoun triggers a complex structure building of uh, relative pause. This resumptive pronoun tells the parser many things. The gap should be in the uh, ergative subject position, and the verb has to be transitive, and so on. In contrast, in absolutive subject and absolutive object conditions, the lack of a resumptive pronoun provides some information, but not much. There remain structural ambiguities, and that does not increase the processing cost. Now let's discuss the reading time slowdown in region seven. A mere expectation cannot account for the pattern. An ergative NP in absolutive object condition should be expected by the speaker given the lack of resumptive pronoun in region five and the transitive verb in region six. As for the slowdown in region seven, we can suggest two slightly different possibilities. <clears throat> Let's look at the first option. In this first option, in this first approach, we suggest the processing cost of the ergative NP to be the filler gap integration cost. As illustrated in 50, upon seeing an ergative NP, the parser integrates the filler to the gap. In other words, the filler gap integration is triggered by the appearance of ergative NP. In contrast, a slowdown was not observed in this region in ergative subject condition. In, but this is expected because the ergative subject condition, the filler gap integration has already been finished in region five, thanks to the presence of resumptive pronoun. We did not see a small, uh, we did not see a similar slowdown in ergative subject condition either. It seems that the similar integration process should occur at this region. We suggest that the integration cost in absolutive object condition was larger than that in absolutive subject condition. This could be accounted for by a subject advantage or the dependency ergot in ergative subject condition is linearly shorter. Now let's look at the second approach for the slowdown in region seven. In this second approach, we could suggest the slowdown to be a spillover effect from region six. Note that in ergative subject and absolutive object conditions, the same transitive verb appeared in region six, but, the, but what the parser to do is quite different in each condition. Uh, please look at 55. Uh, recall that in ergative subject condition, there was a resumptive pronoun in region five, because this resumptive pronoun has already provided information about the verb. The presence of a transitive verb in region six mm. should be fully expected, then there should not be a major processing cost. In contrast, in absolutive object condition, the transitive verb in region six should trigger a lot of structural predictions, including something like projecting the ergative subject NP and the gap creation in an object position. It could be that the parser expected C to see an intransitive middle verb given the tense marker in region five. In that case, the appearance of a transitive verb would cause a prediction error. Then in absolute subject condition, the intransitive middle verb in region six should trigger some structural predictions. But again, we did not see a major processing cost in this condition. 
This suggests that the processing cost for positing a gap in absolutive subject is lower than that in absolutive object condition. This could be accounted for by uh, subject advantage or the dependency in absolutive subject condition is linearly shorter. Okay, let's wrap up the discussion so far. We saw that the resumptive pronoun in Tongan uh, incurred a processing slowdown and we suggested that it reflects a detailed structure building prediction triggered by the resumptive pronoun. Although it seems to reduce the processing cost for the rest of the sentence, the resumptive pronoun is a major factor responsible for the costly process. We also observe the processing advantage of subject, uh, absolutive subject condition over absolutive object condition because both positions are associated with absolutive case, the contrast is not about ergativity. We suggest that the subject advantage or linear length of the dependency plays a role. Note, however, that this subject advantage is not strong enough to overturn the processing cost associated with resumptive pronoun. Therefore, we can say that ergativity influences the processing of relative clauses in Tongan more strongly than the subject advantage. Um, let me just throw in another observation from the work of our team. We tested Tongan children's comprehension of WH quest questions, a construction fairly close to relative clauses. We observed that their performance on ergative subject condition was no worse than that on absolute subject condition. This suggests that in Tongan children, factors like the subject advantage or agent first strategies are stronger than the ergativity. Okay, finally, in conclusion, we, we run a self-paced reading experiment in Tongan, a verb initial language with syntactic ergativity. Absolutive subject condition was read very smoothly. Ergative subject and absolutive object conditions showed some slowdown, but in different position. The resumptive pronouns in Tongan was costly to read, leading to a major processing cost for the ergative subject extraction. The slowdown in uh, absolutive object condition reflects the fellow gap integration cost. Okay, since we run out of time, I stop here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have uh, plenty of time for questions. Um, if you have a question, please indicate so in the chat or um, otherwise through Zoom, and I will call on you. Um, Jed? Hi, thank you for the, uh, the, the this talk. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, you know, that people are doing more of this type of work. So I, can you scroll back up real quick in terms uh, when you talked about their accuracy? Okay. Um, so I was just wondering that, you know, these are uh, like fairly uh, low accuracy. I was wondering what you have, like what the, ex what would the exclusion uh, criterion was, and why you know the the, the, the why the accuracy is uh, lower than, uh, I guess what I would consider normal. Right. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, this accuracy rate is slightly lower than what we usually see using like English or Japanese or very common uh, those languages, and the. The, well, the first a criterion I used is that we first we we get the mean accuracy rate for the overall mean accuracy, mm -hmm. and I cut it out, cut it out the uh, participant whose accuracy rates is two standard deviation lower than the mean. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I mean we need to exclude lots of people, and that's a waste. Waste. Um, mm -hmm. And the the another reason that the general lower accuracy with those population is that. Um, I mean, they, they are not familiar with those artificial lab-like uh, reading time studies, and they, especially this is a self-paced reading study where they have to read in um, sort of 
lab setting way. Yeah. I mean, usually they don't read in that way. And so the, and the sentence is just quite long anyway. Mm -hmm. And then lots of, um, but this, I mean, <clears throat> uh, people showed up in the sentence and it's confusing. And also, um, I don't know how strongly this affects this, but the experimenter who explaining those experiments to the participant is the teacher of the university. And the students are a bit nervous about like those settings. Uh, that's uh, slightly, you know, effective, I guess. And just a follow up question. Uh, so, so the, the, the reading time uh, analyses that you have, these are of the, the correct uh, responses, yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, we have a question from Nozomi. Hello. Um, thank you Hi. for an interesting talk. Um, obviously, it's a very important uh, work that you guys are doing. Um, my question was actually the same as Jed's, um, but I had a separate question about the language background of the participants. Um, you said these are uh, university students, but I think if I remember correctly, Tongan yes, uh, has a, uh, is going through a language shift that um, it might not be a very uh, you know, strong language in terms of vitality. And I was wondering um, uh, if that had, um, if you saw any influence of, um, I don't, well, first, first of all, I don't know uh, how proficient they were in English and if um, that was, that had any an effect on their Tongan at all in this uh, generation. Right. Um, so basically they are bilingual, I, I would say. They, they are, their English level is very high, I would say. And uh, I excluded one participant who is, who, who's, who, who said that their, she, her L1 is English and then Tong, I mean, she's still learning Tongan, uh, something like that. Uh, but other people, as far as I checked through the uh, sort of information sheet, like questionnaire, background questionnaire, um, they are okay. I mean, they're comfortable with reading both in English as well as Tongan. And then they don't see Tongan as uh, uh, strongly inferior to their English usage. And then they, uh, as, as far as I can tell, they are okay. So um, I haven't included those score into the model to analyze the data. Uh, maybe I, I, I should in the future. Um, but I, at this point, I'm, I'm comfortable of using those people as a native speakers of Tongan. Um, of course, uh, I'm not sure whether Yuko sensei has something to add, um, uh, but all right. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. I was not suggesting they were not a native, <clears throat> they were not native speakers. I think I was just wondering if there was any like generational difference or something right. if you look at right. older speakers, but thank you. Thank you. you yeah, maybe those language, that you want language to... proficiency issues is more coming up in the, when we, when in, uh, in other team, we, we tested the Tongan children in the kindergarten. Yeah. Sorry. No, Next I, question. yeah. I was just going to say if, if Yuko Sensei wanted to uh, yeah. say something. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> thank okay. you, Hashimi. That was a really good presentation. Um, uh, as for the like a proficiency, I think these students' main language is Tongan. But at the same time, you know, they were in this university setting where instructions, so this is USP, like University of South Pacific. So um, the of course, the the me you know the the language used on campus is English uh, in classroom. So um, and then so I also feel like they are not used to reading these complicated sentences in Tonga, and they are definitely used to reading in English, right? So um, that might be the effect that we had on the accuracy rate, but. Um, they are definitely native speakers. They they use Tongan uh, among themselves off campus. And so, yeah, that's all I wanted to add. Thanks. Thank you. 
Jung, do you have a short question? Yeah, it's mainly a clarification question. If you go to your 45, there is a bunch. So you, you listed these three things to be the cause associated with the resultant pronoun. I was just wondering, I guess I was just wondering, do we see other places where these kind of information overload in an informal sense cause such uh, reading time difficulties? Maybe this is just from my unfamiliar, unfamiliarity with the processing literature, but yeah. Right, thank you. Thank you for asking for that. Um, so that's part of the one suggestion I uh, I used for the reading time slowdown in region seven. Show, that shows up in region seven, which I one one possibility is that that's a slow uh, spillover effect. Well, actually, the effect occurs uh, a region before that, which is region six, where the transitive verb appeared in a absolutive object condition. So in those cases, when they see a transitive verb, they have to do lots of things. They have to, uh, um, they have to, uh, they, now they have to, they know that, that that's a transitive verb. So the clause has to be like that. And then they have to posit um, um, gap, a potential gap and the subject position and blah, blah, blah. So that's one of the <clears throat> um, possibility of showing that. So. I'm not saying that this uh, processing cost with the resumptive pronoun is um, only occurs at, like with the resumptive pronoun, but as you said, that's the certain certain multiple steps they have to do at this position, or they have they got uh, lots of information at the same time. May um, <clears throat> um, that's that's one possibility I suggest. Um, so what I guess I'm curious about what counts as lots of things. Oh yeah, well there's no definite number of like how many is that a lot or how many is not so so not so. But um, but I mean I can imagine the processing step like the seeing um, resumptive pronoun it provide the people a lot of structural information I would say. Complicated I would say yeah. 